Atheist Nomads episode 362. Are bars or churches worse right now? <laughs> the podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo haws. Please be advised. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin, and joining me is Lauren. Hello. And Aaron. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, hi, hi. Can we talk about hoo haws this, this episode? Oh, please, let's. <laughs> we have two of them. Yeah. Two hoo haws against one. What's a weird word for penis? Dingus. 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 Two hoo haws and a dingus. <gasps> oh, or a ding dong. Oh my no, dingus. Okay. Oh my gosh. Can we please make that a podcast? Oh, that would be fun. That would be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> we come up with the best ideas. <laughs> our million dollar ideas that are shelved. Uh, yeah, exactly. and that would have, probably have to be an advice podcast. And we do not want dusty hoo haws. Oh my god, let's do an advice podcast. I want to give advice. Let's do. <laughs> yes, so, so I'm going to do a healthy relationships <gasps> class in September. Ooh, I That's know something that everybody in high school should go through. Exactly, and then again in college, and again in co- and then again in your mid twenties, and then again in your and then again in your third like finances, <laughs> and then three times in your thirties. <laughs> With like the like the finance classes that they don't yeah. teach, like no, your car is not an investment, even if you put four hundred dollars subwoofers right. in it. Here's the thing that I just learned about is that there's a there's a doctor from Yale who is a big like advocate for um, elementary, middle school, and high school. You know, so what is that? Primary education? Yeah, high know. school, anyway. secondary, but. Uh, in secondary, primary and secondary yeah. education, um, to teach emotional literacy. Yeah. Like, like, um, so that you can be, you know, emotionally intelligent, because if you can be emotionally intelligent, then you work better and you're more productive and you're more creative and you work with people. <laughs> what does that mean, though? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? What does that mean? Okay, for those of us that <laughs> emotional Never intelligence that. is a concept I've heard that I will admit I immediately dismissed the first time I heard it, but I've yeah, never so he, actually heard a description of it that made any sense. Yeah, so emotional intelligence, I, I think mainly it's like being able to identify what your emotions are and why you're feeling the way you're feeling and then working through that. So, hey, so we could be in. Well, uh, but I mean, doing it but for do yourself, it yourself. Okay. Yeah, but That's being what a dog able is to do. For. That's... <laughs> but you know, like if you're in, say, for instance, if you're in a heated argument, right, and then you're just like, cool, like emotional intelligence is to like be like, okay, I can either keep arguing my point here until I'm right, until I'm blue in the face, and then I'm screaming at somebody, or I can be like, why am I seriously really upset right now? Like, what is the what what is the point of this at this moment? And is this productive? Which happened to me the other day when I was arguing with Christine about whether or not we watched a Bachelor show together or not. And in the <laughs> middle of this argument, I said, this is stupid. I hmm. don't care. Like, this is a really dumb argument. And so I'm sorry that I even brought this up. Because why would I want to argue with you about this? Right. Well. Ah. If we want to talk about heated arguments, <laughs> yes. Last week, uh, I was sent on an errand right before we went to the cabin to uh, pick up some beer. That was uh, charity fundraiser beer f- supporting Black Lives Matter, um, nice. being done by uh, Barbarian Brewing downtown. And I didn't know that there was a protest going on at City Hall and that Capitol Boulevard was shut down. And as I was detoured around, I couldn't tell what was going on at the protest. Took me a little bit because I saw a giant line of mostly normal American flags and a few thin blue lion flags. Nobody carrying a flag or in that line was wearing face masks everyone inside of that line was wearing face masks (laughs) so that should tell you right away 
what's going on. And then there was one woman behind the line wearing a face mask who was uh what's uh carrying a black lives matter umbrella and is like hmm. oh yep i i get it now i know what's going on here <laughs> uh so you mean all the white supremacists came out with all their guns i mean how I do saw you the know fight. the white supremacists just because they have a nazi tattoo <laughs> right so, yes, because I saw the videos. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's, it was bad. Like, it wasn't yeah. burned down the city bad, but it was bad. So what, what happened was it was the the Boise um, City Council and mayor were meeting, um, reviewing next year's city budget. And since they were reviewing a budget that is majority police funding, and yes, Boise's pol- City's budget is majority police. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, which isn't abnormal for a city. For a city with as low of a crime rate as we have? I know. So I sent an email to, and I did not, by the way, it did not ever say defund. It said, <laughs> yeah, stop using that term. Differently. It said to, uh, uh, my whole thing is I look through it and I even, I even put in the subject line, um, like different allocation of funds because that's exactly what it's asking for. Yeah. Is Reallocate funds to fund to it differently. Programs Not to def- that were eliminated. Right, years right, right. Ago. Reallocate. Yeah. And, and I got one person who wrote me back and said, right up top, well, defunding the police. And I was like, nowhere in there did I say defund the police. So right off the bat, you wrote this to just send to some, to, mm-hmm. to the multiple emails that you're getting so you didn't actually read anything that i had said i mean it was a stock thing that i sent to but but i was like well then you're not really reading what this thing is asking to do so while the the council was meeting right outside of city hall where they were meeting was a black lives matter rally calling for defunding the police which, again, is not actually eliminating all police funding. It is reallocating funding to social programs to reduce the amount of violence that happens and take police out of situations they aren't trained or qualified to handle. Yeah, you'd mm-hmm. think they'd be the first to sign up for yeah. this. Yeah. The other group that I saw carrying the flags were a Blue Lives Matter counter-protest. Yes. Nazis. Which ended up being Nazis. Um, yeah. I don't want to see all say that all pro police people are Nazis because they're not. A lot of them really do no. uh, have police officers in their family, and they just want them to be safe. I have a but stepbrother who's a retired cop. The people who show up to as these ca- to these counter protests with guns out and tattoos and spitting and saying nigger and all that stuff those are nazis anybody whose response to black lives matter is no blue lives matter is a racist yes period yes yep so at this point in time anybody still saying blue lives matter is a racist that's what i was just end of discussion on it yes exactly because uh, but by this point you have to be so bar up your own ass <laughs> to not understand what it means to say all lives matter and blue lives matter. I mean, honestly, like you have, like, you know, the know. connotations. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Like everybody knows now. And so basically anybody who's still doing that is actively letting everybody know that I am a racist. Yep. I do. I only like white people. And, um, we have a person who is running for, or but I think he just lost a GOP though against Simpson. Um, mm. for, so for Senate, right? Uh, Simpson's Congress, Congress. House. second congressional district. Oh, okay, yeah. So he lost that, but he's trying to he's trying to be a candidate for something else. Anyway, he's a he's a real piece of trash. <laughs> and I can't remember Dumpster his name fire. because it doesn't really matter. But he was at the rally. He was there um, in a <sighs> MAGA of course. t-shirt yeah. smiling around people who had um, SS 
tattoos and pins. Oh, so, so like he yeah. was w- with uh, right in the thick of the Nazis. I'm surprised Heather um, Scott wasn't there, or McEachin, oh, Janice may- McEachin. Was she out there? I feel there? like she- I don't know. We have a lot of problematic people in our, uh-huh. in our uh, well, literature. because didn't wasn't McEachin's- wasn't Scott the one who who had the rally to be like. Come, come without your mask. Yes. Come yeah. and huddle together and talk about how big of a scam this is. That was in the state capitol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, that. no. She, she was going to do it at the Zamzow Center, oh. and then when they found out that that rally was happening, they're like, "No, thank you." And so <laughs> uh, they did it somewhere else. That's hilarious. Wow. Yeah, and and for those of you not familiar with Idaho politics, Heather Scott <laughs> is a crazy, crazy from the Panhandle who has proven that everybody who's saying the skinheads left was wrong. Yeah. Um, the, the Idaho panhandle is still a bunch of skinheads. Uh, yeah. Apparently it, they're it, it, running around with guns up there and no masks. Yeah. And then that's what they have actively said. McGeechan is the Lieutenant governor who has been fighting the governor Ugh. for being too reasonable. Yeah. You know, we all kind of like sighed when another Republican got elected, but I have to admit he's been handling this better than most of the other Republicans that we know of. We have been lucky in that. But it's, it's not perfect. Obviously, things are still going upside down here in Idaho. Right. But we've but... been we've been fortunate that with Little and Otter before him that. But... In the primaries, I mean, the Republicans in Idaho chose the least worst option. <laughs> right. And that's because a lot of Democrats uh, are vote in the primary voters. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's it's a done deal. So might as well affect what you can. Um, right. Exactly. But oh, to, to be a governor and to have a lieutenant governor who is literally anti everything that you do. And calling for your removal, your impeachment. Like, oh. well, I feel so bad for our new mayor who apparently had a mob with a pitchfork outside her house. That's the next story. Oh my god. Oh, sorry. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so back to this, this, these, okay, okay. these two dueling protests. It started off with Friday competing Friday. chants. Friday. No, that's not. With the one side chanting "Black Lives Matter, defund the police," and the other side chanting. Back the blue, USA, USA, USA. Uh, A reporter from KTVB who was there pulled back when the crowd started shouting at her. I'm going to assume this is the Blue Lives Matter crowd. And spitting on her. Definitely the Blue Lives Matter crowd. Didn't they also yell that she was like a liar? Uh, She was from the media or something like that? Probably. Inglet says, uh, according to the article, Inglet says one protester spat on her after shouting, "Fuck the media." Yeah. Okay. There, that that's what it was. Yeah. So she backed off, and then fighting broke out. So a video that I saw was a woman who, and she didn't catch. And this is a black life. This is a black life matter um, protester. She did not catch the actual punch of a counter protester to her friend, but the after part, which was when the guy who sucker punched, so the counter protester sucker punched, and then there was a cop behind him who then high fived him. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Cop in uniform? Yep. Oh, get that badge Ooh. number. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. People are stupid. Uh, wow. So. I mean, obviously nothing happened because we would have heard more yeah, about it. Nobody but. was severely injured. There was punching back and forth. Um, protesters on both sides were trying to break up fights. The police jumped in and started breaking up fights. I know when I drove by, I saw six police officers there and they were all back in the street. There were probably several in the crowd that I couldn't see. But, well, I think yeah. there had to have been some around city hall, like uh-huh. guarding it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. 
But the crowd is big oh. enough. There was no way I would have seen that. Yeah, I guess it was supposed to start out as kind of a visual and kind of because what I heard was that um, the booth minister was there and she was actually trying to call for like a moment of silence. And every time they tried to do that, the counter protesters were yelling. Oh, and they also had um, they also had noisemakers. Hmm. So these big speakers that every time anybody would like start saying like, you know, Black Lives Matter, they would um, turn on this like really loud horn. siren. It was yeah. described as a siren, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is common. This is going on all over the country. And it's just, oh, man, uh, that kid who died from for buying iced tea from a grocery store because he was wearing a hoodie in uh, Colorado, his memorial service was violin players playing a moment, you know, during a moment of silence, they started uh -huh. playing up. And a, a freaking bunch of cops came, raided them, pepper sprayed them, um, did all sorts of shit. <laughs> all on I video. Thought there was, yeah, I thought there was something else, though, where there were some people who were fired. Not, not they the got fired offending after. officers, no. but um, people who... Uh, the officers who were disturbing and taking weird pictures of no of what happened so all of those stuff. all of those like 40 cops that raided his memorial they didn't get touched the ones that went back no. to where the kid died and posted pictures of them reenacting the arrest yes. those people yeah. got fired there was like three yeah so the but but not the offending officer nor the emt no. who who gave the lethal dose of ketamine no uh that i i mean it's fucked up this is like one story I couldn't after even, another mm. oh my gosh but the and and the fact of the matter is did you read this transcript of what he said no i don't want to this uh, is like it, there's it only so much you can take right even more heartbreaking because he's like oh god i i won't do it because it's just like uh it's gross what it's sad yeah. and it's it is and it needs to stop it does, but we live in Idaho, and we have people who are actively trying to menace, mm -hmm. even though they keep saying they're there to protect protect their protesters. first and second amendment rights. As long Any as protesters, they say, protecting. Yeah. We're here to protect protesters, but you know, we're going to look at you with a gun in our hand. Ugh, it's like what was Karen and what well, the, the Karen and the rich karen and what what was his name i know who are democrats yeah the uh, the ones in north carolina that that were yeah they were the black lives matter people were um marching to their mayor's house and they happened to live on a very on a very rich end part of town so a couple of the millionaires came out on their front porch pointing guns at them Right, and the even worse part was that her finger was on the trigger, which is the number one thing of you never, never do that. Do. Apparently, he was holding onto his gun okay. He, he had it pointed down. He had it pointed I mean, down. He, it had was his, he had his hand on the muzzle. He was actually doing proper protocol. She was just being an ass. No, they Sorry, should have both I been mean, arrested. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. She should have been arrested on assault because if you point a gun at somebody... Make eye contact and give a little nod, like yeah, like I'm that looking woman at you. that the, causes fear like that of woman and, bodily harm. Yes, that is so the definition there, of assault. <laughs> so there is a woman, a married couple, who pulled a gun on a a mother and a daughter in a parking lot somewhere in the Midwest, and they did get arrested for felony. Ooh, okay. Uh, and got weapons licenses taken away. Good, and I think they're their guns too <laughs> so that should be the so that should be the least but right. it's, it's but, just the entire country is so on edge about everything right now right it's i think the thing uh, it, it really is disturbing. insane and i think yeah. the the thing is that like how frustrating is it for um well for people of color who are like this is our daily lives and you know it took a it took a pandemic for you, I mean, because that's really what happened. It mm -hmm. took a pandemic. It took a pandemic. That put a lot of people out of work, exactly, which, en which enables them to protest. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. 
because you don't see massive protests until unemployment skyrockets. And being out of right. work because of pro- quarantine, that's included. Mm-hmm. People don't have we just to. Have... It's just. Right. Oof. Let's go and we just have the mayor a lot of with a pitchfork. Yeah, but we just have a lot of time to sit, too, and yeah. look and be outraged, which is great. But also, I know from what I've been hearing, it's also a little frustrating. because It's like, <laughs> this has been happening for 400 years, and mm-hmm. now everybody wants to get on board. Which is, I mean, let's not say that it's not good. But you can't but... be sitting there saying, oh, well, I've always been on your side when you weren't even aware yeah. that... Yes, this was exactly. Two, you know, three months ago. Yeah, exactly. We're like, so, I grew up in a town so racist that there weren't even black people there. You grew up in a right. state so racist that they had that in the Constitution. Yeah, Oregon State Constitution. Uh, Oregon was admitted as a white only state, not in the free of Go beavers, the slave <laughs> or free state. It was just whites only. Uh, yeah, eighteen fifty nine. Both sides were able to agree on a state that doesn't allow any black people. Uh, That, of course, was invalidated with the, not 14th Amendment, but the Civil Rights Act. Right. So that was 70... The 1960s. I think 1964 was when that was finally firmly invalidated. What year that was? Uh, The town I grew up in had sundown laws on the book well into the 60s when most of the men in town were members of the KKK branch. While I was growing up in the 90s, there was still a grand dragon of the KKK with an office downtown. And there was never more than one black family living in a city of 30,000. Do you know, it is very sad because I didn't know what a sundown town was until just a few months ago because Nicole Byer has a podcast and she was talking about how awful Spokane was. <laughs> and then she brought up sundown towns. And I was like, yeah, wait, oh, is Spokane fuck. a sundown town? Well, she said it might as well be. Oh, yeah. Well, it's yeah. Spokane. She had a horrible, but, awful time. But there, when you grow so. up, when you grow up in a place that is so racist that it's just only whites. People stop talking about it and you don't know that it's going on. You don't know what's happening. And. It's easy to grow up thinking racism is gone when no, racism there was just highly effective. And those are two very different things. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, and this also brings up another thing that someone had pointed out. And I, I really had to tell myself, like, do not comment because you do not want to get into this rabbit hole, which is. Another thing with wearing masks and closing down businesses and, you know, doing things like that. So after the second time in Idaho that this happened, um, I, I have seen a post by this person who said, well, what does everybody think? Or no, first asking about um, who's been affected by this, which I was like, wow, what a very privileged question that you have decided right. to throw out. Well, what? And Please tell been, me if anybody's been affected by this. And then once they in were, Boise once in people, particular, they're saying, "Well, when was the last time a black person was killed by a police officer?" Right. I'm like, but, "Fuck but, you, Dad." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's just things that are just so crazy to me because of the COVID nineteen thing. Well, and that was the, the specific reason why he posted it. It was more or less who's been affected by COVID nineteen, right? right? Who's who's had this issue? And so then it was. And then it was started to be things where I was looking down and it was like, well, I don't understand why we're protecting an in air quotes or in quotes. It was like a a a very small minority of of people. Point oh two percent is what he said of people when so many other people are going to um, be homeless or bankrupt or die. And I was like, this is what I wanted to say. Uh, actually, 99% of us are all one accident or mm-hmm. big health issue away and have been b- way before COVID-19 of becoming homeless, uh, bankrupt. There's a thing called medical bankruptcy that's been around for a very long time, yep. um, th- which can lead to death. 
um, this has already been on the scene, sir. Like this is this <laughs> yeah. is not a COVID related issue. Uh, this has been a this has been a major thing. But because you can't pour beer right now, um, you now understand that this is affecting us. And if you want people, s- if you want to see what it looks like, if you just ignore it, uh, Sweden went with a very soft approach on it. And is their economy is now worse than their neighbors who did early lockdowns. Everybody was admiring them at first. Because they thought the herd immunity, right? Which has now been debunked. Yep. So it is now looking like herd immunity to this is impossible because people suck at developing antibodies to this because it's still novel. Right. It is a novel virus to humanity. Right. I just imagined it as a Spanish novella and it makes me very happy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry so to dramatic. derail the Black Lives sorry. Matter, but No, but that segues know. nicely to our next yeah. story where the city of Boise along with several other cities, uh McCall, Moscow, Haley and Driggs, um Ketchum has as well now. Um various cities in Idaho have required made masks mandatory in public in any indoor spaces or in crowded outdoor spaces. Right. Um, so it is pretty lax if you're like walking. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't wear it when we <laughs> or, walk in our neighborhood. But if we're going to be walking hills, on the green which, belt on a Saturday. Yeah. 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 Which people don't do, which is scary. So that's Eesh. why I don't. I just walk in my neighborhood. <laughs> we were impressed that we w- we were in Yellowstone at Old Faithful this last week. We were impressed at the 50-50 mask wearing. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, nice. We were. Yeah. Everybody's outside. So. I was willing to give people who weren't wearing masks the benefit of the doubt until we went to Mud Volcano, and I saw that most of the people who weren't wearing masks also ignored the one-way signs on the boardwalk. Mm, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no, those are just assholes. And then they'd crowd you yes. if they walked by the wrong direction. I, I was know, like, oh, yo, these right? are just real assholes. Yeah. Like, when I was walking back from the foothills, um, because there were way too many people not wearing masks, um, yeah. <laughs> and so I was walking back on a trail, and and I was walking towards a group of six people who were all in a single line walking towards me. <laughs> and I was like, are you fucking kidding? They didn't even, fall- none of them fell back to give me space. Oh, six across. Yes, yeah, six across. Sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah. six oh, across. Dick move. Walking towards me. I was like, what is happening right now? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that is where you dicks. Oh, my God. Okay. So, and so, yeah. So the, the masks are now mandatory here. And in response to that, Mary McLean has gotten more protests. So there were protests at the budget meeting, and then she started getting protests in response to the mask order. Um, on Friday, so the observed holiday for 4th of July, protesters the day before it took effect demonstrated at City Hall, the Central District Health Office, and at McLean's personal private home. Which I don't care what side of the aisle you sit on, red or blue, you know, black or white. You don't go to the people's houses when they're public yeah. figures. It's just, ugh. ugh I mean, that's, that's, their, that's really their family horrible. that you're threatening. That's your, yeah. your neighbor's. I mean, that's there's why some you people get Karen in Washington. Standing out. I, I should stop using the term Karen. It's very well. That's the first group. Uh, the well, there's Chad. Uh, Health too. Freedom Idaho. Chad, that's the word. Oh, I was thinking Karen and Chad. Okay. That was it. Health Freedom Idaho, uh, the local anti-vax group. Of course. Uh, they, they were at the City Hall protest, carrying signs against masks and taking some of the free masks the city was giving out and burning them. Uh, some of the signs <laughs> read, and I quote, where there is risk, there must be choice, end quote. And, quote, I will not mask my unborn child. <laughs> End quote. They got to they gotta slip the anti-abortion stuff in there somehow. It's just weird. Mask my yeah, unborn. Weird. The masking orders all exempt children under the age of five. And nobody is suggesting masking in utero. <laughs> I don't even know. How can you do what that? What does that even mean? I will not mask. Do, uh, 
I guess that means that if I'm pregnant, I'm not going to put a mask on. So, okay, cool. Or if you're pregnant, you're not going to use vaccines that would protect your fetus. That has nothing to do with masks. That doesn't. No. No. I was. I thought maybe it was a euphemism. I don't know, but it doesn't make any sense. I mean, here's my here's my thought, (gasps) and someone else brought this up is Darwinism, right? But but there's another part of like, yeah, that's all well and good, but the problem is that they're spreading it to people who are still trying to actively. (laughs) not get this dustin and so, i were very careful our whole trip in yellowstone with us and kylie not trying you know trying to avoid the covids uh-huh. didn't stop the, the stomach bug though that hit everybody yeah. oh, in God. the family it's like god damn it yeah <laughs> kylie what did you touch and right and and Actor. So this group is... Once you try, something will get through. This group <laughs> wants to bring plagues back. Right, because they think it's God's wrath or something. They want it's vaccines like to go away so they want so that viruses can f- flow through freely through the population. They have rights too, you know. Making people sick. They want dead children. They want a COVID isn't killing a lot houses. of children, but it is killing children. Diseases aren't killing children as much. They want children dead that way, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Faith alien, that, too. They're just obsessed with dead babies. Yeah. Um, so oh, then God. The other- Did we have to bring that back every time oh, I'm on oh. it. Health Freedom Idaho <laughs> protesters brought that up. We just did it up. again. I will not mask my unborn child. It's That's an anti-vax funny. group. Of course this is about yeah. dead kids. Of course it's about you, Aaron. <laughs> I mean, every time every I'm on this time. podcast, we don't we don't mention babies. it for months. And yeah, bam, there you are. And we didn't last time you were on. Uh, no, you're the, right. I guess at I least do. One of the other uh, protests was organized by uh, the Idaho Freedom Foundation. Yeah, which is a far right, radical Christian theocratic group who also wants to see the world end. Which is also what partially funded by the john birch society and they want the world to end with plagues and fire so yay we have people protesting masks because they want the end of the world right here's the here's the other thing how how many people have brought this up though do you think Lori vallow's like i told you Uh, chad's (laughs) right oof like the world is ending (laughs) people are protesting there's upheaval. There's a virus wiping out people. Plus, Idaho has had some major aftershocks since uh, March, which <laughs> yeah. I feel almost every night, by the way, guys. You know what? I, I thought can, it was going crazy. She can go ahead and believe all that as much as she wants behind bars. Yep. Um, yeah. Because Both she's, of them. she's crazy. He's crazy. But, they're, yeah. they're sociopathic murderers. And people who oh, are God. that far off the deep end in their religion need the religious people to pull them back because you can't stand by as you know a pretty decent mormon and say oh they're just fundies no you gotta say no that is not a part of us and you need to stop because you're crazy well yeah and i think that's the whole because as atheists it's so easy for us everything they say is crazy every all the religious it's, mm-hmm. But once you get over to the religious side, you say, okay, well, I believe in this particular thing. Yours is derivative of that. You, It's 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 your responsibility, too, to step up and say, oh, you took it too far. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I, that, I mean, you know, the thing. everybody kind of... on every side can take it way too far. I mean, we've known plenty of awful atheists. Yeah, but not murdering <laughs> their... Ch- oh, wait, there was the guy who built the We bomb. don't know. We don't know. <laughs> No, actually, I was I'm just thinking. Sure, I was, I'm we, sure plenty of serial killers would say that they're atheists. I mean, this is true. This is true. <laughs> I was just thinking of statistically speaking, though, atheists are less likely to commit horrible acts. I want to know how many how many serial killers would count themselves as atheists, though. No one in almost no one in prison calls themselves an atheist. Well, they so can't. Do you think Ted Bundy was an atheist? I, I'm no, I think Ted Bundy. You don't think Ted Bundy was an atheist? atheist no. Serial. What about Jeffrey Dahmer? Killers. 
What about that Can guy? Can only do it one at a time. Ted Bundy was... A new uh, study published in Nature Human Behavior found that people around the world are predisposed to believe that atheists are more likely to, more likely to be serial killers. <gasps> now, biased even held by atheists themselves. So people are more likely to assume that they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Conservopedia, yeah. a Conservopedia has a list. Ted Bundy was a Methodist. Oh, they're the oh, nice okay. ones, too. And Mormon. Oh, that's right. Oh, right. That's right. Uh, well, there we go. I'll Dahmer. blame it on the Mormons. Not that he hadn't killed before that point, but... Jeffrey I, here's the thing. He went Dahmer. to Mormonism so that he, he could groom people. And we all know that, right? Like, he Well, that's what Mormonism's for. And became... I know, but he became a Mormon so that he would be less likely to be caught murdering But he was a people. Methodist before that. Yeah. Ooh, the guy from uh, Dayton, Ohio, the nightclub shooter there was uh, an atheist and Marxist. Whatever. Wait, wh- who was? Maybe, yeah, maybe that Which is one? my bias. Okay, so Con- Connor Betts, he was the Dayton, Ohio nightclub shooter. Okay. From 2019. Demetrius Pagortzis from Santa Fe, Texas, killed 10 people at a public school. He was anti religious. When, what? What time period? That was a, a 2018. That was not that long. So I feel and like I what? here. Here's what I should preface this with. I think, and because a serial killer is anybody who's killed three or more people. So, but there's also mass shooters. I would say that most of the mass shooters would consider themselves atheists in this time period. Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, I would absolutely disagree on the mass shooter one. You think so? No. You look well, at mass well, shootings. It's Muslims and white supremacists, and most white supremacists are Christian. Yeah. No, yeah, that's... Yeah, what about that guy? All the... You could always Wait. think of one or two off the top of your head, but statistically speaking, I this mean, list let's talk atheists, about Colin by. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about that guy who shot up the movie theater. I'm... Uh, I, I feel like he was not every, religious. Well, you... Well, first of all, if you're going to list them off, you have to be sure. I mean, at least I'm yeah. looking at the list. <laughs> I don't have that technology. My phone's about Stop to gish die. galloping us. Gish galloping. Okay. Woman, Brass gish round, galloping. But that's a fun, but that's for a fun every thing. You one, told me they, earlier, I'll gish gallop you. Yes. <laughs> what the hell does gish gallop mean? That's where you throw out more what than your... sex thing? No, no, no. That's a, a creationist... Uh, Christian apologist debate practice... Of throwing out more claims than your opponent can respond to. Oh, oh, yeah. Basically, yeah, for everyone atheist me. that you can list off, um, I, we we could probably come up with twenty religious. It's yeah. just it's just more common, right? Okay. Next topic. How about, that is not to say how that. About, how about fictional? I bet there are more fictional. I, I'm still looking killers. up Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, he ate people. He's weird. It was weird. He converted to something and... And of course, everybody in prison is is not an atheist because you get a more leniency if you're yeah. religious. Oh, yeah. If you go to church shit, they found Jesus or whatever. Yeah. Because so, then you can go and... Yeah. Yeah. You parole be like, board, I'm going... right? You will have a new Well, band. that and, the, and be like, oh, I got to go to Bible study now. Yeah. You know, an hour in the library is better than sitting on your bunk. And then when you look at some, some, uh, some sources, the claims will be, well, obviously that person wasn't religious because religious people wouldn't do that. Well, that's, yeah, then that's not. Uh, Guys, you know why I like recording from home? Because I can take my bra off. Oh, <laughs> and I feel so such good. a good feeling, right? <laughs> the only problem is about twenty minutes later when you're hot and you're getting boob sweat. I gotta, I gotta, I got you know, going. I gotta, I gotta rope for that now. Also, yeah. we have we have central air conditioning, so <sighs> we do not. I know, but In the, fact, it's really I'm, hot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people are definitely more likely to kill in the name of their religion or their god than they are in the name of atheism. Uh, you're okay. Um, okay, well, so I'll concede. The next I'll story: uh, the Texas Medical Association has put out a ranking of COVID nineteen exposure risk. Is that the one where it's like one through ten and where you can contract it most? It's in what situation? It's a, a one to nine scale. Uh huh. With one being the lowest risk, 
nine being the highest risk. They ranked 35 day-to-day activities. So the lowest mail. risk thing they have is opening the mail. Yes. Opening the mail. I was trying to find that the other day for um, my caregiver group, support group that I have. Yeah. Because I was like, listen, bars are the worst, guys. And <laughs> seriously. <laughs> okay. Tied for worst, as in you will get it if you do this regularly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, Idaho. <laughs> Attending a large music concert. Going yeah. to a sports stadium. Attending a religious <laughs> service anyone. with 500 plus worshipers. Oof. Mega churches. <laughs> or going to a bar. Mega church or a bar. It doesn't specify how big or small the bar is, just any bar. <laughs> well, versus a mega yeah. church. Right. Because if you look at what happens at a bar, even if. You've got masking requirements. If you are allowed to sit at the bar and drink, you've got people right next to each other, right by the bartender. Having to take off their masks to drink. Yep. And order drinks because if it's noisy, and, you can't understand what the person's ordering unless you could read their lips. Yep. Right. And how many times have we been around people who don't understand personal space when they're drunk? <laughs> uh, you're like cool back your fucking up ass your ass fucking up, yeah. fucking up cool ass. story bro <laughs> so get yeah. out of my face i don't want to hear about your, your life story smell right your now. axe body spray or any of that uh swimming in a public pool was given a six <laughs> yeah sending kids to school camp or daycare was ranked a six Going to church is more dangerous than sending your kids <sighs> to a disease petri dish. Oh my god, fucking kids. Kylie. All god those damn little it. vectors. All those little vectors. Three adults around. were <clears throat> stricken this weekend. And one I think I I think I'm Magic. Magic. I, I blame it on boobs. Boob antibodies. Um I didn't get well, did you... I didn't get sick. Yeah. Although today I've been feeling real rough, but Disease vectors. Well, in fact, I'm going to make her a shirt that says that. You should. I and, and send it to me because every time we see a child out running out in the wilderness, I'm like, just, vector. Here it's you a go. Little vector. Free T-shirt. Here you go. Disease <laughs> so vector. Apparently, in neon there letters. was a record. There was a record. Ninety-one hospitalizations on Monday because oh. of COVID nineteen. In Idaho. Uh huh. Oh. And I know one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I I get the at work I get daily updates on the numbers and the uh number of hospitalizations reported doubled over the weekend. Yeah, and so obviously that's not obviously that's not necessarily 4th of July. No. Celebrations we're not going to see that until probably starting this weekend. Uh, for hospitalization, it's it's the that two to ten day incubation or two to fourteen day incubation, and then from what I've seen, it's usually a week after symptoms start is when it gets really bad, and you go. That's to the why hospital. I'm saying. So we're looking three saying, weeks out. Oh, uh, I'm saying I think we're gonna start, but I feel like we're gonna start seeing people. I'm. It's gonna start increasing again soon. <laughs> <laughs> like sooner. I, I don't actually see this going down anytime no, soon. It's not. No, it's not. Making, yeah. uh, Have you heard of summer vacation uh, I plans very wave, waverly right now? Waverly? Yeah. Wa- Wait. Wavering. Yeah. They're all tentative. Tentative. Mm-hmm. Oh, They're all that tentative. hurts because we want to go camping. Tent. Tentative. Yeah. Oh. No. That was a thing. So Flo- Florida. Well, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, did you hear about or have you talked about those um, parties? There were some parties that that like clubs were putting on where you would pay to go in. And there was a person that had COVID-19 and the first person to get test positive out of that party got the whole pot Holy of money. Shit. Oh, and the mayor of the town was like, do not do this. That is so that was in Florida, right? That sounds I like a Florida man it was. thing. Uh-uh. I don't think it was Florida. I think or New it was Jersey. in like No, it was like Minnesota or, or Missouri oh, or something like that. Stupid. Well, but we've always known that. There's there's it's Russian roulette, but And there there are young people who think that they will survive it. And Yeah. Who have well, not the been crazy paying thing attention is no one to, knows. Right. 
but they think they'll survive it, gain immunity, and be able to go about their lives like normal, which is one of the reasons why nobody's wanting to do immunity certificates. Also, we don't know if you actually get immunity. Right, because apparent, you know, this this is a virus, and viruses mutate, and it's already mutated, mm-hmm. from what I've heard. Yeah. It's actually already mutated. The big strain so. going around is a European variant, not the original Chinese version. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's changed, what, three times? At least twice. Yeah. So Fun. Christine and I, Christine and I's like whole plan to be on, um, what is that show? Shit. The Amazing Race has totally <laughs> been derailed. Dang. Because that would be and I'm awesome. pissed about it. Yeah. We would be so good that's on like that. The only, that's the only one I enjoy out of all of those crazy... Anyway. I told I told her everyone would hate me and they'd love her. Because <laughs> right, so I'd be so mean. Florida has issued a emergency order requiring all brick-and-mortar schools to reopen full-time next month. Oh, my God. <sighs> yeah, they're, doub- they're doubling down. Well, Trump said that He'll pull federal funding from any school that doesn't reopen. How much more federal funding will they pull? <laughs> like, there's barely any federal funding anyway. I don't know if he can or knows how. I don't. And well, Trump says sure... a lot. He says, yeah, that's just word vomit. That's every but time. You know, he and I don't know if this is on your radar or on the news report, but I mean, they did already. He did put in something to pull us out of a pretty big... Oh, yeah. You're segueing to the next story. Uh, yes! Trump has officially begun the withdrawal process from the World Health Organization. Who? I feel... Trump. Trump has started the process to pull the U.S. out of the World Health Organization. Oh, Who? who? <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. Come yeah. on, oh, Dustin. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you made that sweet, though. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I think we needed to. Like, I just God, think we needed to her? hit it home. And can I just say this for anybody who's on the fence about voting? Like that right there is a big, like one of the big reasons to vote. Oh, yep. I got trolled. I got trolled by my brother big time on Facebook because he keeps posting these anti Joe Biden things. I'm like, okay, I get it, but could you just not right now? Because I cannot handle another four years of trump he's like whatever this isn't fucked up i'm like oh fuck you dude yes, we get it but we don't God want damn like, it I, personally it's because i don't want to be a baby maker i feel like handmade tail is like just on the horizon exactly yeah <laughs> uh, i get it that men don't quite see the issue sometimes but <laughs> babies are expensive <laughs> Yeah, and no, who that's not what I was saying. I don't want it. the government. No, no, yeah. no, that's not what I meant. That, I'm joking. Well, no, I'm not. But, but no, the the, because, the Trump administration yeah. is yeah. So pulling the U.S. out of the, the the World Health Organization, the U.S. is the largest contributor of funds to the World Health Organization by a lot. So gutting its funding in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. It can't though. It takes a year. Yes. So it's not. It, so so <laughs> you think this, this pandemic's a, only going to last a year? The second half of the no, pandemic. no, no, no. But I'm just saying. That's why I'm saying voting is so important yes. because it does take a full year. So this would go into effect in July 2021. But if there is a new president, he can rescind that. Yes. Yep. Uh, so that's why yeah, I that's say important. It's important. the alternative to rescinding that is letting China and Russia take control of the World Health Organization. Because that's only going to end well. Yeah. And while I mean, so his whole thought, I thought the whole reason why so the whole reason why they decided that to do that is because the World Health Organization is biased towards China. And that was the reason for filing this. That's Trump's excuse to not. Yeah get the blame for his lack of response right yeah to blame them because he That's... he said oh they're biased against for china because it's china's fault for not telling us sooner that's really reaching in deep i mean that's... right and i was <laughs> i wanted to say really because i i specifically remember at the beginning of march making fun of you 
for telling everybody, don't worry, and holding up a piece of paper and try and pointing to it to prove to us that we had the top scientists and we're fine. Yeah, top scientists. He kept saying it over and over. We got the top scientists. Mm -hmm. Scientists want to come here. We got it. It's totally fine. Everything's fine. Uh, Pence is on it. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> All right. So the Paycheck Protection Program, as part of the CARES Act, to help keep people from getting laid off during the pandemic, offering free... Well, not, okay. There were technically, there were loans that would be forgiven if you don't lay people off in a certain time period. Uh, churches got a lot of it. Churches got a ton of it. In num reports that are finally coming out because they've been trying their darndest to not give out any information about this, uh, the Church of Scientology had three separate branches that got between one hundred and fifty thousand and three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> your your neighborhood, you know, neighborhood owned restaurant. Or bar didn't get any money because right. they didn't quite qualify. Or they ran out. Because Scientology did. Uh, tens of thousands of mosques, synagogues, churches, etc. got part of the $2 trillion. It, how, ma how many of those actually hire on their... Like people versus like the Mormons, they're all volunteer. Almost all of them. <laughs> I'm sure LDS probably got some money too. So at Let's least they are they did paying it. somebody. The the LDS are the, really the only religious organization that doesn't have local paid staff because they're messed up. Because they're weird. Yeah. Uh, no, because um, they're messed up. But they yeah, want to hoard their still, money. It's yeah. just that. Mm. There's so so but, many businesses yeah. got denied because they didn't get their stuff in on time. But if you look at who soon enough, if you look at whose salaries were being protected, it's church secretaries, pastors, church leaders, like uh, conference presidents, bishops, and the like. That's who churches employ. This wasn't right. money going to religious schools this was money going to churches yeah specifically to churches the catholic church got a ridiculous amount of money which is, is uh, each diocese is its own independent organization yep and as long as you can claim different organization you are able to apply and if your organization say the the diocese of boise has you know, 75 employees or 100 employees or whatever it has. Yeah, that qualifies. That's just, yeah. There are so many people who are out of work and barely making it and are losing housing because we're, we're starting to see those, you mm -hmm. know, 30 day notices now. Um, damn it. It's just bad. Yeah. And there would have been less of that if. Republicans hadn't specifically gotten churches added in that required a special exemption because the program it's being run under small business administration loans explicitly does not allow religious organizations because of a thing called the First Amendment. Oh. Um, of course, that is eroding anyway because the U.S. Supreme Court issued a ruling saying that Montana's tax credit program that allowed parents to send their children to private schools but couldn't get the scholarships for religious private schools was unconstitutional. Right. So if you had a public school a charter school and a religious school all in your neighborhood, you could get money to go to the public school or the charter school. No, the public school is free anyway. 
Oh, the public school's free. The anyway. charter school's probably free anyway. You would have gotten a voucher or it yeah. was free. It'd be... You have to pay if you want to put your kid in religious school because that is not in line with public education standards. They're skipping a lot of material in religious schools. You're not going to be able to pass the same tests. And, you know, it's kind of a privilege. It should be treated as a privilege. Not the same or equal as public education, which is still struggling for funds. Which they would have been setting it up for, apparently, non-religious private schools. So, like, college preparatory academies. Which I'm sure Montana has a ton of them. Oh, God. I bet they're just overflowing with with Ivy League wannabes. We've got one down the street. Really? A preparatory school? Oh, you're on Warm Springs. Yeah. Riverside. So the the ruling... uh, You're the rich part of town. Of course you do. A line from the, the, the majority opinion said that a state need not subsidize private education. But once a state decides to do so, it cannot disqualify some private schools solely because they are religious. So that opens the gates for everybody. Unless, well, it's a tricky one because on the one hand, that could be setting precedent that a future court will go the other way and say, oh, you just can't subsidize private education, period. Because if you can't discriminate between secular and religious private schools, then you just can't do any private schools, period. Which would be awesome. Uh, keep Yeah, except for the person in charge of education is a royal moron. Yeah. So I don't think she'd ever be like, yeah! For the school choice people, this is perfect because they're trying to push for vouchers and scholarships with tax credits and stuff to allow people to send their kids to private schools. And this means that if they can get that program through, it automatically must allow religious schools in. Yeah. That, which is what they want, which is what they've been wanting this. Whole time. And what they've been pushing in and getting in quite a few States. I just surprised Mont- it happened in Montana. What's also disappointing is this should have been, moot and not taken up by the Supreme Court because Montana canceled their program. So they had no standing, so it should have been thrown out. The whole thing was thrown out. Not a standing thing. There's just what... There's just... They shouldn't have taken the case because there was no case anymore. There was no active controversy. But they did. And I wonder why they did. Hmm. It only takes four justices to take it on and five voted to... Make sure that private schools or church schools are private schools too. Blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sticking with Montana, the new Florida. No, that's <laughs> no. no. Uh, a thirty-year-old Columbia Falls man wrapped a chain around a monument at the Flathead <laughs> Courthouse. Tied it to his truck. As you do. And tore down the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> did something to piss this guy off, and I, I applaud him. But you don't don't destroy public property, but oh, god damn it, that's awesome. The way to get rid but of do. <laughs> the way to get rid of Ten Commandments <laughs> monuments is lawsuits, because those are illegal to have at courthouses. Uh, taking it into your own hands and tearing it down is not advised. Wink. Hilarious, but he got charged with a felony. That's more than a thousand dollars of of uh damage. That's for damn sure. Felony criminal mischief. <laughs> mischief. Yeah, but of that all the things to go. Cool, though. You're like in I jail know. with these guys who have like distributed drugs and murdered people. They're like, what are you in for? I'm like, what are you in mischief? for? Mischief. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wah, wah. <laughs> that sounds so Harry Potter. I mean, I know, <laughs> I know that that you know, I I know that the author of those books are is problematic, but it still reminds me. <laughs> oh man! Uh. <laughs> All right, and uh, Facebook has a 
ad boycott going on right now because they refuse to take down hate speech or do anything meaningful to deal with the amount of hate speech on their platform. To be fair, Mark Zuckerberg has been kissing the ass of Donald Trump and every other conservative since they yeah. started complaining that the that Silicon Valley was discriminating against conservatives in 2017. Yeah. So he's still kissing Donald Trump's ass and oh, yeah. he meets with them, doesn't he? He has. I mean, it's like Yeah. It's like he's not just in the pocket, he is actively the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. So, you know, didn't some of didn't some Facebook employees walk out because of it? Yes. Because yeah. Because of how un, employees un, walked out, some, you know, no name adventure company started a uh to uh I I'm reading st- something right now for withdraw in- their advertising and then some bigger y- ones Uni- did. Unilever, Ford and Verizon have paused. Yep. Uh um those are the those are three big ones that they've named so plus far. Plus Coca-Cola, Levi Strauss, uh, North Face. Guys, there's, yeah, there's we're talking so some many... mainstream big companies. Which also should tell you what companies you should go with. Because here's the things that I have found lately that have been super disappointing. Although, Pepsi, don't drink it. They, they gave Trump. Coke, love it. Keep drinking it. Uh, which is so sad because they tried so hard to get Obama to to drink know. Pepsi, and he just he's like, I can't. I'm a Coke guy through and through. I know, but I refuse. So I don't want to drink Coke because they're the ones that are stealing water from everybody. Yeah, but um, anyway, I well then maybe Nestle. we should just not drink. Guess yeah. who owns? Coke yeah. doesn't own Nestle. What? I thought they were all owned by the same. No, Nestle's a Swiss company. Well, that doesn't and, make any well, difference. Well, so here's the thing, guys, when it comes to fast Coca-Cola food. is a Georgia company. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> they're, I'm pretty sure they're not related. So so here's the thing. Oh, yeah, sorry. Protest. Do not, do not go. Well, we already knew never go to Chick-fil-A, right? Like, oh, we already knew that. that. But no Wendy, no Pizza Hut, no Taco Bell, <gasps> no McDonald's. I know Taco Bell was the hardest hitting one for me, actually. <laughs> but yeah, they all gave to Trump. And if you're wanting to go with that approach, um, it's time to delete Facebook. Yeah, and I have been thinking about it. I have. I because I just also apparently Facebook is for old people. Did you know that? <laughs> oh my god, my mom is part of a high school reunion group and of course she she uh graduated in 69 so it's like okay so that's how old these people are and they are crazy far right wing out in the boonies and it drives her crazy i'm like guess what mom (laughs) that's most of your generation (laughs) yeah i know so so the thing is that, like, the only reason why I have not deleted Facebook, my Facebook account right now, is because I have a show that I produce. But I when have... it comes to business, that's a that's yep. a slippery slope. It's hard to give that one up. The, yeah, the... and that's the and and the other thing is I'm a moderator off of my organization Facebook page too. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, God, I I wish I could turn off my personal. The podcast Facebook can't. page is the only thing that's been keeping me on the platform for i think three years now yeah so i i mean if i if i wasn't attached to those i'd be like see you later but for the most part i don't have it on my phone anymore and i don't try and get on facebook uh, facebook yeah. oh god he's so punchable okay like, so- he's such he's such a robot <laughs> oh, Pfizer was one of the brands that is is boycotting too. Like uh, the Viagra company. Well, it's funny is that there's a bunch yeah. of people that are going to um boycott Facebook who give Trump money. Yeah. That's I mean that's doesn't that's not an equal thing here. All right, so the the meeting a meeting was called between the organizers of the hashtag Stop Hate for Profit uh including the Anti-Defamation League and uh handful of other civil rights organizations met with 
Facebook leaders to talk about how they can fix things and end the boycott. Yeah. And the <laughs> takeaway was that it was disappointing. He doesn't care. Nope. No. Uh, fi- because, because basically Mark Zuckerberg has told his employees, apparently, that he believes that advertisers will be back on the platform soon enough. Mm. So he just doesn't care. He's like, well, the thing is that, okay, so this is what this story says, that belief reflects two truths. The first is that advertising on Facebook is effective. That's true for big brands, but it's an even bigger deal for small businesses that depend on Facebook's massive audience to find customers, which is what we just talked about. Um, Yeah. But the other truth is that Zuckerberg doesn't seem to really understand what a big deal this is for brands. Yeah. Um, So they called for 10 changes that would include things like hiring a C-suite executive with deep civil rights experience to help work on policies about discrimination, bias, and hate. Uh, Doing regular independent audits of hate and misinformation. Removing public and private groups focused on hate or violent conspiracies. And stopping the recommendation and reach of such groups. And giving all moderators anti-bias and hate-related training in the next 90 days. Woo. And everybody who's ever worked for anybody corporate knows how well that goes over. Facebook's response was, they just got the results of the audit they started two years ago on hate, and they're evaluating it. Yeah. Okay. That was two years ago. Yep. Bah! Yep. Yeah. All right, so feedback. Feedback. From Lee via the website. Good morning, Atheist Nomads. Apparently, SpaceX forgot a fisheye lens on one of its cameras. Go to morningstarstail.com. I thought you were going to bleep that out. I decided against it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Scroll down the homepage, click on the SpaceX video, and forward to the 10 minute and 43 second mark. There are two separate cameras showing two very different views of Earth. So is the Earth flat? And if it is, why are we being lied to? Take care, uh, Lee Austin. This one le- this one f- flubbered us for a whole two minutes. Like, no. What? Because the name of the website uh-huh. was what? Morningstar? Morningstar's Tale. Morningstar's Tale. Is it Morningstar a religious thing? That's Lucifer. Lucifer. The yeah. devil. So if you go to the website and scroll down a little bit, Morningstar's Tale. Recently, Lucifer revealed the mysteries of the flat earth and universe. Purchase oh, paperback God. or ebook at Amazon link below. Oh, so, okay. God. So this starts sending off even more red, red alerts, right? And then Dustin recognized the guy's name. Mm-hmm. So go back to the original email. Oh, you don't need to go back to the original one. He was, he wants to come on the show. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's true. So yeah. straight up, this guy sent us an email saying, hey, I have this great fiction novella coming out in a little while. Do you guys want me on the show to talk about it? So then it all clicks. He's like, oh my, I was just saying, I'm like, if this was a satire, I would read it. It is. And it's awesome. And we're going to talk to the guy and get more details about it. But uh, that was that that has us going oh. for a few minutes, and I now have the the copy of the ebook. Oh, sweet! I told you get a free copy. Man, those <laughs> authors they love to hand out free copies. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, to get one copy of the book to get exposure is always worth it. That's true. So this this will be fun. We'll we'll yeah. talk to him about that. But that that email just threw us for a loop. We're like, wait, what? <laughs> Why are flat earthers contacting us? And <laughs> SpaceX's camera beat. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, we got a new patron, Rich. Thank you, Rich. We greatly Woo, appreciate Rich. support. Rich, we, Rich has supported us before. Yeah. Oh, thank you. The same Rich, Rich that sent a check and handwritten note. 
pocket change Aww. and it's so sweet. no 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 that's that's randy oh randy no okay. rich sent a check and right. a, a, a very sweet letter that's right Aww. and comments on the website all the time that's right okay the r's man you guys all yeah. throw me but um that's that's really sweet thank you especially at this time in our lives ah <sighs> it's hard to do the episode sometimes um uh. but there's enough to get angry about now that it's kind of yeah, I don't know. Maybe it'll revitalize our our talkiness. But if you look at the graph on on patronage support, we're actually doing better now than ever before. <gasps> wow! People are like, "Let's tune in." Yeah. Guess what, guys? I am here whenever you need me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. You still I don't get am... a cut, though. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't want one. I didn't even think I was get. I didn't even know I was getting one in the first place. That was the craziest part. I was like, "How oh, long did it take nice before surprise. you realized that you were getting well, transferred no, like, a few dollars?" No, no, it was in the it was in the thing that I signed. <laughs> oh, but but when I had agreed up front, when you had asked me, I didn't, I didn't expect anything. I was like, "Cool, yeah, I'll be." Those co-host. are the best rewards, are the ones that you're not expecting. Hmm. Yeah, and, and, and so here's a good person. Here's what I'm saying. The moral you don't dessert. have to. You don't have to give me any sort of cut. But I am fucking bored. <laughs> so if you could help me here, that would be great. God, I don't because think you're I alone in to, that. Yeah, I need to get my anger. Oh, it's being misplaced right now. Uh, okay. And so, see emotional intelligence. Ooh, there we go. But it circle is, that it really around. Is. Okay, so then we'll talk to you next week. <laughs> yes, probably. Yes, we will. Hey, everyone, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Lauren. Thank you. And listeners, remember, not all those who wander are lost. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. The music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads.